I'm about to show you a selection of images taken with a Leica SL2S and the Lumix S5 II, listed as camera A and camera B. All the settings were the exact same, no editing was involved, and I used the Lumix S Pro 2470 on both cameras. Can you tell what camera is a Leica? I can reveal that camera A is the Leica and camera B is the Lumix S5 II. One of my main goals when I got this Leica was to determine whether there was something special about the colours. I've heard many people rave about Leica's colour science and really I wanted to see something tangible in the final image that entices people to spend their hard earned cash on a camera with a red dot. Those first comparison images were JPEGs straight out of camera with the picture profile set to standard on both bodies. Here's a few more images I took of myself in the studio. These images are RAWs from three different cameras, all with the same settings, same lens and no edits. The cameras I used were the Lumix S5 II, the Lumix S1 and of course the Leica SL2S. And again I'll ask the same question, can you tell what one is the Leica? Camera A is the Lumix S1 and camera B is the Leica, so that means that camera C is the Lumix S5 II. So this is where I get confused. If the colours from the Leica are indistinguishable from the Lumix bodies when shooting in both JPEG and RAW, then where does the Leica magic come in? And since we're getting basically the same starting point when shooting RAW with all of these cameras, then really there's nothing to suggest that Leica's colour science is any different from what you get from a Lumix. When it comes to colour profiles in camera on the Leica, you're also quite limited. Your only options are standard, vivid, natural, monochrome and monochrome high contrast. And you can see here how each of these affect the colours. The Leica does allow you to manipulate these profiles somewhat, but the only changes you can make are to the saturation, contrast, highlights, shadows and sharpness. All of which you can set anywhere between minus 2 and plus 2. There's quite a few more settings that you can adjust in the Lumix cameras within each picture profile and there's ultimately more profiles to choose from as well. And really the changes that you can make to the picture profiles on the Leica can easily be replicated in either Lightroom or even on the basic iPhone editing options in your camera roll, so really there isn't much point in messing with them. So that means that if you are a photographer that likes the idea of getting various looks straight out of camera, then the Leica probably won't be the best camera for you. I will say that I do love the images that I've taken with Leica's monochrome high contrast profile, and of course Leica is known for doing black and white photography very well. The raw files from the Leica edit and behave very similarly to the raw files from any of my Lumix bodies, and that definitely isn't a bad thing since they both produce incredibly malleable files. I have heard quite a few people say that the magic of Leica is all in the lenses, and while I don't doubt that the image characteristics from Leica Glass are exceptional, it just makes me wonder why you couldn't just use the Summicron lenses on a Lumix body and get basically the same results. This is probably why the Q series is so popular, since you get that lovely 28mm fixed lens and benefit from the Leica Glass and sensor working together. It may also be a completely different story with the higher resolution sensors in the SL2 and SL3, but since I haven't tested those cameras yet, I can't really comment on whether my overall experience will be better. The SL range really is made for professional photographers, and that means that those higher resolution sensors could come in handy for cropping, studio portrait work and so on. I really have enjoyed getting to learn this camera, and of course the build quality speaks for itself. But with the Lumix community waiting on the successor of the S1R, we don't know whether that camera will perform similarly in terms of image quality, just like my experience with the 24 megapixel variants. So this is where I'm at, since I've just invested a few thousand pounds into a Leica, hoping to feel that excitement that you should get from a flagship brand, but instead I just feel a lot more confused than I did before. I just wanted to quickly cut in here and say that even though everything in this video may sound like a negative towards Leica, that I do still understand the appeal of the brand and I do ultimately get why they cost the money that they do. I mean, ultimately I don't think there's any other camera brand that can deliver this sort of build quality. Maybe Hasselblad could, but there's really no one else that I can think of that builds cameras as well as Leica does. I mean, of course, these are designed in Germany, they're built in Germany, and they're assembled by hand by extremely skilled technicians. Um, 
so there's definitely a lot to sort of be said about the brand and you know owning a camera with a red dot but I would say that if you are looking for a step up in image quality that Leica probably wouldn't be the way that I'd go and um, personally I'd say that going to medium format like Hasselblad or even the Fuji GFX lineup that would probably be the next step up in actual tangible image quality in my opinion especially if you already own and use a modern mirrorless full frame camera. And of course, I still back my tests that are shown in this video. I mean, they're all done as fairly as possible with the same lenses, the same settings, all that sort of stuff. Um, I just don't think that Leica's color science alone would be enough to invest in one. Um, I think if you were interested in buying a Leica, it should be about the other things that are really done well by the brand. Like I said, with the build quality and with the fact that they can stand the test of time. And ultimately, if you're looking for a tool that will last you for a lifetime, then a Leica is, of course, a really good option. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this topic and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people ready to rip me apart in the comments so if you've ever used a Leica for photography and have anything else to add then I'd love to hear it. I'll be posting a video very soon comparing the video side of Lumix and Leica so if you're more of a video shooter and would like to know how the Leica shapes up in that regard then please make sure to keep an eye out and subscribe if you haven't already.